welcome back to my channel. I'm Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. I'm a full-time writer, blogger and a YouTuber obsessed with sewing. This channel is where I share my passion for sewing through tutorials, how-to hints and sewing tips. I collect and have been known to sew from vintage patterns and some new ones when I get a spare five minutes and have an ever-increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. My videos cover the machines, the sewing and the patterns and sometimes there's a little bit of history thrown into boot. Today's video is about how many fabric layers can a domestic sewing machine sew and can it sew leather? Can a domestic sewing machine sew leather? We'll get into that question in a minute but first let's look at the other question. How many layers of fabric can you sew with a sewing machine? Well the answer to that is actually pretty simple. It's how many layers you can get under your foot. That's this foot not the one you walk with. There is however slightly more to it than that as there is with everything in life. There needs to be room to put the foot down on the fabric. If we take a look at the press foot on Jerome for a minute that's the foot um, on the bed. That's lifting it up so that you can get small layers of fabric under but it'll go up even higher it's got two settings but that doesn't mean that I can sew more layers the only reason this goes up higher is so that it's easier to get bulky material underneath the foot and if we take a look at the Singer Simple which is an entry-level machine it's got one setting and it's got a slightly higher setting so even this one is capable of dealing with bulky fabric. Even Grandma from 1912 has a normal setting and a slightly higher setting. Okay, it doesn't go up quite so far as the one on Jerome, but you've still got that extra allowance for getting the bulkier fabrics underneath the foot. But like I said, none of the extra space on any of these machines means you can get more layers under the foot. It just allows you that extra ease to be able to manoeuvre the fabric. It's kind of a bit like eating. You don't want to fill the space under your foot to capacity because, as with your mouth, if you fill it to capacity there just isn't enough room to move anything around so that you can get under your teeth and so that you can actually chew your food. You need room to move. Most domestic sewing machines will cope with layers of fabric. I think when we did the bat video a few weeks back, Jerome here coped with six layers of fleece, I think it was. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Um, interestingly, most domestic sewing machines will also sew layers of leather. Yes, they will. You need to use a leather needle and that's the whole thing with sewing bulky fabrics or tricky fabrics in particular you need to make sure you've got the right needle for the job and you need to also make sure that the leather is of a thin enough um, quality that it's capable of being sewn by a machine any machine some leather's quite thick and you know you can only sew it by hand so you have to be aware of that I mean, I have sewn leather with Jerome here and he handled no problem at all. Um, obviously, he had the right needle and I did take some steps to make sure that I didn't damage him while I was sewing it. More on that in a little while. But the one thing that you do have to remember with the Singer Simple, Jerome and even with Grandma here, they're designed for home use. They are domestic machines and they're built to take the strain of the usual sewing that a home sewist will do which can be anything from chiffon one minute and fleece the next or maybe nothing for weeks at a time the one thing domestics can't do is they can't sew all day every day 365 days a year regardless of the thickness of the fabric and regardless of the age of the machine Domestics just aren't built for that kind of constant use. They never were. What we're going to have a look at now is 
the three different machines coping with different layers of fabric. Um, we're going to start with Jerome because he's in front of the camera so bear with me for a moment. To start with this demonstration we're going to be sewing two layers. Um, I'll just hold the threads for a minute. I'm not going to bother doing the back tack because obviously this is just a demonstration of sewing through layers. Now I'm a bit awkward because obviously I'm out of the way so you can see what I'm doing but here we go. Okay, that's two layers. Okay, I'm going to fold it over again. And again, so that we've got four layers, uh, pop that under. You see where the extra height in the foot comes in useful? Oh, where's my bobbin thread gone? Oh, there it is. Hang on a minute, just get my threads over there. Right, four layers. Now, you hear that? kind of noise. What that means is it means that the fabric's getting a little bit thick for the needle. Now um, I think the needle is a 90-14 at the moment so what that is saying is you want to be thinking about going up to the next size of needle which I think is either 100 or 110. Um, ideally you could just look for a jeans needle and use one of those but that is saying you're at the limit limit of this needle. You're going through an incredibly thick fabric. You need to do something to help me out here. Okay, so changing the needle would be the first thing you do. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to slow down. Now by slowing down, you notice how that th 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 has disappeared. What you're doing now is you're actually giving the needle that's in there slightly more chance to um, to do its stitch before it's been asked to move on to the next one. So by slowing it down, you're giving the machine a better chance to get through that thickness of fabric. That'll do. Because my thing got notice. That's a drawback of having too many sewing machines. They've all got their press a foot lever in a different spot and I keep forgetting where it is. Right, okay, so that's the Janome going through four levels of fleece, or four layers even. And it did it okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to swap over to the Singer and see how well that copes with it. This is the Singer Simple, it's an entry level machine. We're going to try it with just the two layers to start with. Now this is fleece and my foot pedal's upside down. Bear with me for a second. That'll work a little better. Right, um, gonna hold my thread. Again, I'm at a funny angle because I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. just two layers and it didn't do too bad did it and this is just an entry level machine with um, a light duty motor on it helps if you take the needle out of the fabric before you try and take it out from underneath silly me now where's the thread cutter on this one there it is right now we're going to try four layers by just folding it over a little bit Again, okay, lift the presser foot. Hold me threads, where have they gone? There they are. And off we go. Oops. four layers. Now this is a new needle so 
it handled that a little bit better than Durant did. Um, try a different piece of fabric for a minute. I might be able to do it on that one. Try this one. Right, so that was four layers. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll try five. Move the threads to the back. Lift the press foot up. Now I'm going to have to go to the second um, setting to get it underneath there. Now what's happening, I want to turn it around for a bit, even at its highest level that fleece is having trouble getting underneath the foot and the reason for that is because, if I take it back out a minute, is because of the feed dogs. What's happening is with the foot at its highest level if you try and get fabric through there that's bigger than that gap it's going to snag on the feed dogs and that's going to stop you being able to push it underneath so that you can actually sew. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, having enough space to move. If you haven't got enough space to get your fabric under the foot and smoothly across the feed dogs, I'll just make this a bit smaller like that, you're not going to be able to sew it. So that's a good indicator of how much fabric or how many layers your sewing machine will be able to sew. If you can't get it under the foot without snagging the feed dogs, it's too many. We're back with Jerome for a minute. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the needle just to show you um, what a difference a needle can make. I'm going to swap it out for a jeans needle um, and this is a size, uh, was it gone, 110? Oh, sorry, over 18. the Janome doing um, six layers of fleece. Now you'll notice that I still kept the speed slow on that one and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But that six layers is the limit for this machine. Now let's see how grandma gets on with it. The one thing that I forgot to mention with um, Jerome, did you notice the difference with the jeans needle? That had gone and you just got the the, the normal kind of noise that the sewing machine usually makes. So that's the difference between going up to a different size needle when you're dealing with the heavier fabrics. But now let's just to see how Grandma can cope with it. Okay, I've just moved you in so that you can actually see Grandma a little bit easier because you were a bit further away than I anticipated. Right, okay. Let's try her on two, as we have done with the other two machines. Slides under the foot, really easy. Hold on to her threads. Now I'm going to have to sit a bit more ski with now for Grandma. Okay, she handled that beautifully, bless her. Okay, uh, I don't actually think she's got a thread cutter, so I'll have to grab my snips a minute, just a sec. Okay, so let's try... That's three, that's four. Oops. Threads all over the place now. Okay, slides quite easily under the foot, it's not catching on the feed dogs, so let's give her a whirl. Just hold on to those for a moment. Using electric machines too much to try to stop her with the pedal there for a minute. Okay, so we got five and we've got let's try her with six. Oh, let's get rid of some of these threads. Okay, if we push the foot, it goes under, it is just clearing the um the feed dogs, but like on Jerome, we're gonna hold the threads. And we're going to see if she'll do it. Bless her. She did that better than Jerome. There you go. Six layers of fleece on a treadle. But again, um, because the foot only goes up so far, 
that was the limit of the fabric for grandma as well because any thicker than that and you'd be snagging those feed dogs as it goes underneath. Thicker fabrics or lots of layers make the motors in electrical machines work so much harder. The advantage that grandma's got over electrics is she's obviously human powered so you can adjust the speed just that little bit better which is why she probably handled it a lot better than Jerome did. There wasn't a motor to take into consideration. The problem is if you put these under too much strain by using them 365 days a year, seven days a week or whatever, is it will burn the motors out, especially if they're entry level machines like the Singer Simple, which tend to have lighter duty motors. If you need something that's going to soak 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you need an industrial machine. And if you want to sew leather 24 seven, you need an industrial machine that can cope with leather. But if all you've got is your beloved Jerome here, or even if you've got a Singer Simple, how do you sew through thick layers of fabric safely without damaging your machine? Before we get into that, now would be a great time to consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell so that YouTube will notify you next time I upload another video. Um, the series is that I'm working. The series is the series that I'm working on at the moment include how to use electric sewing machines um, and hints and tips on getting the best performance out of your machine. Um, I'm still working on the series showing how sewing machines have changed since 1912, and obviously there's a series on using commercial sewing patterns as well. So yeah, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. When you're faced with thick or bulky fabrics, there are a couple of things that I've seen people do. Number one. The first thing that I've seen them do is, as the fabric is going underneath the needle, um, they'll either push it to make it go under faster, or they'll grab hold of the back. This is tricky. Hang on a minute. I'll do it the wrong way around. There you go. They'll go out the back, and as the sewing machine's sewing, they'll be pulling it and yanking on it and tugging on it to try and get it to go over the tricky bulky bits. The problem with doing that, you're either going to bend your needle or you're going to break it and neither is good for you or your machine. The second thing that I've seen people do is they'll give it more juice. They go faster over the hard bits. A bit like putting your foot on the accelerator when your car's going up a hill. The thing is that extra speed to work harder just doesn't work with sewing machines. Sewing machines need the gentle touch and a softer approach. You need to slow down. Your machine needs to have time to have the needle go down into the machine, pick up the bobbin thread, form a stitch and come back up all before moving on to the next stitch. Going through thicker fabric is going to take that process just that little bit longer to achieve. It may be only a couple of seconds, but those seconds make all the difference. If you go too fast, the needle is still going to be finishing the last stitch and you're asking it to move on to the next. And what you're gonna end up with is skipped stitches. So, now we know what we shouldn't do when we're sewing thick layers of fabric. What should we do? And how do we get the machine to cope with leather? Okay. Number one, make sure you're using the right needle. If you're sewing with leather, use a leather needle. And don't be scared to swap out your needle mid-project. If you've been using, um, say, a, a needle 9014, um, and you're finding that you're getting a p -p 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 change it up to a jeans needle. You'll find that it will go through that fabric so much more easier. The thicker the needle, the stronger, the more it can go through the fabric. The second thing to do, watch your speed, slow down. The key to sewing any kind of bulky fabric or any kind of thick fabric is to go slower. Going, going quicker isn't going to get you to the end of that seam any faster. You're just going to be met with problems. The third thing to be aware of is be aware of the strength of the motor. If you have got some bulky sewing to do, don't do it all in one go, especially if you're looking at using the Singer Simple, which has got a slightly lighter mower motor than Jerome here. Give it a chance to cool down, give it a break. Take regular breaks away from the sewing and give your machine time to 
get over the scenes. Your machines will thank you for it. And remember, it isn't just the layers or the thickness of the fab fabric that can be a problem, it can also be seams. If you watched my back video, um, which I'll put a link to in the description box, you'll see that the biggest part um, where Jerome was having trouble was when I was going over the seams where the different layers were joined together. And I knew he would. Um, like I said earlier in this video, I was using a 9014 and I should have gone up to a jeans needle, but at the time I didn't have any. So to take the pressure off the needle, I was taking my foot off the welly pedal or off the gas pedal and switching to the hand wheel. And that is another way that you can deal with bulky seams or even just bulky layers. Walk your sewing machine through with the hand wheel. In a similar way to um, using one of these vintage machines or um, even a hand crank, you just turn the wheel. Another way of making sure that your sewing machine can cope with bulk is particularly with seams, make sure you iron them open or flat and at the very top of the seam if you chop the edges of the actual seam um, into a diagonal that reduces the bulk in the actual seam allowance and that makes it easier for the sewing machine to cope with that. Another thing to bear in mind is sewing machines can't cope with the ski jump effect which is where you've got um, a seam coming up and your sewing machine foot's had a bit of a a bit of a slope it's going like that in order to get it to sew properly what you're going to need to do is level your foot up and to do that what you can do is put something under the back of the foot that just levels it out um, you, you can either use fabric like I've just done or you can actually get um, gizmos that are called bump jumpers that can fit under the back of your foot. Another thing that comes in very useful, I should take that one out for a moment, is if I turn this round for a minute and actually take Jerome's foot off, is you can get yourself one of these little standard sewing machine feet. Uh, you see that little, that little black knob there? That will do the same job as a bump jumper. And all you have to do is when you get into a bumpy seam, um, you push that in and it levels your foot up for you so you can get over the bump easier. With these tips you should find that your domestic machine will handle layers of fabric with ease. It'll also cope with leather. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you sew thick fabrics or lots of layers and if you have any tips or suggestions in how you deal with it. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I try to answer as many as I can as quickly as I can. If all things sewing is one of your passions, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and why not check out my other videos. Use these links here, they should be coming up shortly. This is one that YouTube thinks you might like to watch next and this bottom one is one that I think you might like to watch next. Whichever video you watch next, I hope to see you back here for my next one. Meanwhile, wherever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.